The stored spent nuclear fuel is brought to the encapsulation plant and transport casks from Okiloto and Lovisa. The cask arrives at the fuel reception area of the encapsulation plant, where it is lifted onto the transport cask transfer trolley in the transfer corridor. The bolts on the cask lid are removed and the lid lifting device is fixed in place. The transport cask can then be docked to the transport cask docking station on the floor of the fuel handling cell. Empty disposal canisters arrive from the other end of the encapsulation plant. The cast iron insert of the canister is installed inside a copper tube in the assembly area and lowered into the canister transfer trolley in the transfer corridor. The inner lid is installed in place. The copper lid is lowered onto its own hoist on the canister transfer trolley, which is used to transfer it to await welding. Next, the canister is docked to the canister docking station on the floor of the fuel handling cell, and the actual encapsulation can begin. First, the inner lid is removed by means of a device in the docking station's atmosphere changing cap, and the canister is protected by the covering hatch. The lid of the transport cask is lifted with a cask lid lifter and placed in the storage position in the radiation shielding lid, which is covered with a protective cover during encapsulation. A protective cone is installed at the top end to allow any water dripping from the fuel elements to drip back into the transport cask. The massive radiation shielding cover can be moved over the open cask to lower the radiation level. The lid of the fuel drying chamber is removed and the 12 fuel elements loaded into one disposal canister are transferred one by one to the drying station by a fuel transfer machine. The drying process is carried out by vacuum drying and it lasts a few hours. After drying, the fuel elements can be transferred to a canister. This is followed by a gas exchange where the air inside the canister is replaced by argon gas. Next, the inner lid is fitted with the docking station's atmosphere changing cap and the bolt on the lid is tightened. The canister is lowered from the docking station with lifting screws and is then transferred to the machining station where a contamination sample is taken from the top of the canister and if necessary, the surface is decontaminated. The canister can then be transferred to the welding station, where the copper lid is fitted and the lid welded using a friction stir welding machine. After welding, the canister is returned to the machining station, where the upper end of the canister is machined. Machining removes excess copper from the canister lid and machines the weld seam area to allow inspection of the weld by eddy current and ultrasound testing, in addition to visual inspection. Once the weld has been shown to be compliant, the canister can be moved further along the process. If the weld is defective, the canister can also be machined open at the machining station if necessary. The transfer of the canister onto the canister mover is done with the help of a canister gripper device. The device grips the upper end of the canister, allowing the transfer trolley to be moved out from under the canister and the canister pallet to be driven underneath. The canister is lowered onto the pallet and transferred to the intermediate storage by mover. When the disposal campaign is about to start, the canisters are transferred from the storage area of the encapsulation plant to the intermediate storage area of the disposal facility at the disposal depth by means of a canister hoist in the shaft.